ladies and gentlemen, welcome to first ever, first of many episodes of the Shop and Boxing Podcast, featuring your man Ricky C and my homeboy, Mark Two Shop Johnson, three-time world champion. And we are here, the champions here. For our first guest, we have man, two-time world champion. He was a member of the Slick Stick in 1998, and we had six world champions. And he, he man, he, he's been doing a lot of big things that we're gonna talk about. Right, right now, ladies and gentlemen, we have with us the little big man, Sean Bates Mitchell. How you got it, boy? Thanks, Tom, Sean. Hey, it's honor to be you got it. What's up, what's up? Big time world champion. Oh, got two going with Man, oh, <laughs> <laughs> But we ain't fight for no hope. Let me let me ask you a question though. like you said, how did you pick the nickname, the little big, the little big man? Little big man came from uh, when I was in college, University of Brown. I went to Howard first, and um, transferred out of there. And from Lincoln Brown, I just wanted to go big with structure. And people said I couldn't do it, so and I can't. And people said I can't do it. I went for it. And um, got good grades in, in Maryland at that. But um, we did in the 90, in 90, uh, Maryland didn't have uh, with basketball or football or anything like that. And um, the uh, campus, the campus um, paper did a story on and they called me the little big man on campus. I was like, ooh, that ain't bad, little big man. <laughs> So it, it kind of just stuck with me. I stuck with him for a little big man. Uh, here I am today. Or uh, on him, that age thing. When I, <laughs> it's, it's many years later. I'm still looking. <laughs> <old. laughs> so um, one of the main things, you know, once you got into boxing, how did you get involved with boxing? Oh, man, it, that's the crazy thing. Um, it's funny, my, my dad, uh, post office, he worked at the, um, the post office in Southwest. Actually, Brian, you, you, you was out there, man. I don't know why you his phone was your mail. I don't know why you had his phone. My father was in Bill back in the day. Exactly. That's how I know. I told him all my life. That's the best. Just took the body, give him the cookie when he comes down the hill. Like this, with his phone. He went to the heat. My father grew up up tank in Northwest. And, um, Adrian, um, Adrian David, um, they all went to school together. Even the school of North Mountain and to Cooley. And um, he knew he knew him back then. So he knew he had a, um, a gym in, in Hydesville. So uh, one day he came past my house and just asked me, you know, won't you ride with me? And he took me to the gym down in, down um, in Hydesville. And I went in there and um, I think Adrian was at the Ohio State Fair. This is 19, 1978. 1978 he was at the Ohio State Fair and um Vaughn was in there. So actually Vaughn started me off. Wow. He actually taught me how to fight. <laughs> the son so him fight up and down. Yeah, the son really taught me he taught me the basics that Adrian came in man and, and just cleaned up everything else. It was great. And um and, and that's how it, it, it got started. They asked me how they liked me. Like, you know, so I, it was another sport for me because I was playing basketball and, and football. And football really is my number one sport. Really, the boxing, I really didn't think I would, yeah, I really wanted to play football. I was um, all county running back in, um, in Prince George County. So I, I, wanted, to, I wanted to play football. Because back then, they didn't really have any leagues or you know teams like that so yeah, yeah, recreation. recreation leagues yeah but in maryland they always had you know major teams so um that's what i, I played for i do yeah on bg i played for high play um learn my learn how to play football there let me ask you now um, should i be um once you got in the box tell me a little bit about your amateur i mean world i mean national championship People talking earlier about the Olympic trials. Let's talk a little bit about that. Um, damages back then was a little, a little different. Like we, I started out. I think I was fighting 
65 pounds. She got sick. Like, okay, 65 pounds. You know what I'm saying? Um, I had like 172 amateur fights. Um, I lost seven fights as an amateur. Um, you know, growing, growing up then as a junior, you know, I fought so many people as a junior. Um, and for them consecutively, all the time, all the time, all the time. That when it was when I was here, turn teenager, it was like um, either I turn novice or I wanted to turn open. I wanted to go right to the open. I didn't want to fight anybody that I fought with anymore. I just wanted to fight bigger people and grown men. That was, was my a, big thing. It was a guy that taught me when I first got to the empty scene. I met a guy that smoked in New Jersey. Ain't be the like that. I'll kids for me I took a whole team. Your kids, we here. We can watch your kids be great. Long to be good. Whenever you have show, you fight people from out. If you look at it, you look at their book. Bob Johnson the Fort Shaw Bay left him 15 times. Right. But so when so when they get to the national, the only style Shaw Bay know is box style. Only style box knows Shaw Bay style. And then when they get thrown in there with somebody different. And it, you know, that's it, funny. That's so, funny so, you say that. So, because so, that, me that. that's funny you say that because um, it's funny. It, you know, me, Mark, uh, a, a lot of the guys that was um, that was world champions from our area, we fought in the big stages of the amateurs ranks. Like we went to some of the nationals. We fought in like the Olympics festivals and trials and stuff like that. We did those things, right? And then we never stayed just here in D.C. and fought in D.C. as a pro. Professional man, listen. The, we had so many great fighters here, but they stayed here in fought. The can man, the trash man, you know, and they never got the different styles. Exactly. And it's, it's ironic that how myself, Mark, um jack off we we branched out to like to atlantic city but you know i saying my first my first i think 10 fights was in atlantic city on tv as a pro as a pro as a pro and then but you also you got number one thing else you sean babe back then the Virginia Olympics used to be on tv yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. Yeah. Good. Yeah. at that time, the Jimmy Lemmy, you can only fight there with the 14 or 16. Yeah. So, I won the Jimmy Lemmy's, and then I won the Golden Gloves at 15. Right. So, me and you was the youngest people that yeah. they never tried. Exactly. And, and we, that, yeah. they didn't even want us to fight them. Because I, I won the, when I won the Julia Olympics also, I won the Julia Olympics, and they, it was, it was a major big thing. Like, I was, look, it was a major <laughs> big thing. When you went to Junior Olympics, it was like, whoa, as a junior, you was like, the Olympic champion. Well, I would say this: like when when I was when I was running the junior Olympic program here at DC. Now at this point, they had they had um they had expanded. So now they they went from eight eight years old to sixteen years old, right? I took like twenty two kids to stay up. We watched the whole mess and put but without kids, but you just had to get that two years to work. So which which just goes to show that even from when y'all are beginning. And, and the what's going on now with these kids. These are bad. Yeah, they, they have. These are fighting kids. But it's crazy because, like, back then, as we had to be in a certain age group to be able to go to the national. Right. Yeah, right. We could, like, I had to turn, I had to turn 12 years old, 13 years old, just to be able to get on a plane to go out of town to be in the national, the junior Olympic now, national. Now, now, now it's so messed up, Sean Bay, it's so messed up now where you don't even, they don't even have the local tournament to go to the regional tournament to get kids to go to the national. Oh, we had to, we had to pass all that. I know, I know. We had to, we had to go, we had to go. Now, all you gotta do is sign Sean Bay Jr. Right. Put him on the plane. Yeah. Step on. Mm -hmm. You don't gotta qualify nothing. Right. I don't like I don't I really don't like it that way. Let me ask you a question. Um let me ask you a question. Um then we're gonna go back to the early career. Go back to the L. Go back to when you first got the box. When oh, oh, oh no, not when you first got the box. But but as you was coming along in the ramp. 
and you got ready for for big fights or whatever, who were some of your toughest sparring partners? Sparring partners that people really probably really don't know, or you know what I mean? Just just guys that really could do it, like you said, they just never got a chance to get out. Well, as an amateur, what was it for? The start of the Oh, as amateurs, it was always um, Adrian's son. <laughs> like, Victor, oh, Victor, <laughs> uh, like, look, man, I, I was, you gotta understand, I was the, the smallest one in the crew. So I was the youngster, but I had to get in the ring. With these, you know what I'm saying? They was the only ones in my gym bed. I can really, we were in spot work. We did it wasn't like we do then. We go to everybody's gym game around there. Nah, it, it wasn't like that. So we, yeah, no, you, listen, <laughs> our gym was the gym that we had all the hill fighters papers in there. One certain time, you came in there, trust me, you had to work. I remember, <laughs> I remember, I remember as a kid, Mom, I'm gonna let you go, but I remember as a kid when Mom and James, like I said, I grew up with Bob James with the people. But I grew up with them. I, I used to go up there and watch them spa. I played baseball. Like you said, mm -hmm. you play football, I play baseball. But I would go up there and watch them train. When James and it was doing their chill work, when James and Chill Will got ready to spa, the whole basketball court was clear. Everybody coming in. This is like Madison Square Garden. Chill Will. <laughs> chill Will. Hey, so, chill Will, my so, guy. Shout so, out to Chill Will. When, when I, when I, uh, when I skipped, got permission to go to the Olympic Festival track, um, my first trip was uh, Lake Placid. So I go up Lake Placid, okay. Okay. and me and Rich both get into in the mess hall. <laughs> and Chia Will was like, he looked at me and was like, oh, I already know I shot baby. So he was like, Tommy, just chill out. And he said, I said, I don't care who. <laughs> Me and me and really been friends right. ever since. Every I was just a little kid, right. you know, up there. I wasn't even supposed to be up there. Yeah. I got permission yeah. to go and I end up winning. Yeah. So let me ask you this because even when you were you with the Amazon, you need to turn it over to a pro. Who was one of your best you think your best? fights that you had and i mean i think i know i think i know what you're gonna say that's why i was gonna get it i think i know what you're gonna say but i'm gonna let you go what was your best fight we was on the same show as an amateur pro professional professional oh i was gonna go back to the amateur. Right, my best fight ever probably when i fought i was at i was at my height i think because of the we both from uptown and we both was um it wasn't really a beat but it was just a thing that we want it was that tension there and man listen i tried with them when he i tried with them when he had to fight you and i was looking down and well we was down twice and all the people was coming he said how you doing chat i'm like you run around these four five big belts <laughs> right <laughs> but i thought your best I thought I'd say the show Rex Green. Reggie Rick. Oh my gosh. Nice. Yeah, yeah, Reggie. Hey, it's funny because uh me and Reggie used to spar in in the gym suits. We sparred maybe three or four times in the gym. And I used to hate sparring him because he could get like well, got to say on to spar. Strong. Excuse me for my name. But oh, we, we he could hit we, like a mother. We, no, we talk this, this motherfucker. Listen, he yeah, could hit. And but at the same time, it was just like, you know, I had won the belt and I said, I want to go home, go home to defend my title and bring boxing back to DC, right? So I'm the one to bring boxing back to DC. And then I was, they was like, well, who are you going to fight? Like, you know what? I'm going to fight somebody from home. Said, we had so many contenders. I said, you know what? If y'all want me to fight Red, I, I give them a chance. I'm gonna give him a check because nobody else is gonna give him a check nope. for a, a fight at the bell. So guess what? I gave him a check. Yeah. I'm gonna tell you the best. But I knew what I was getting myself into. Trust me. I'm gonna tell you the best fight I ever seen. And the that box. I was young at the time. I didn't know you personally, but he was like one of my best friends. He, he's actually in the studio and Mark. That's how we all became friends. You, Lily, what? <laughs> Lily Wilkins. You, you and Lily Wilkins at, 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 at the Hillcrest 
on bingo hall. Yeah. Yep. Man, look, you got all you got all the dudes with the money in there passing money. They betting. They everybody came to see this. They ain't care nothing about none of them other fights. They came to see this. You was a superstar at which y'all know? 2014? No, I think they was open at the time, but they both, they both, he was know. open. Oh. He was open and I was still a kid. Yeah. Okay. We okay. couldn't support the fighting team. Mm -hmm. Okay. That might be the and, best and, note and I've seen in my life. They just they made the, the fight happen. I was like, because me, I was just one of those person that I, uh, one of those people that if you want to fight, we gonna fight. It, it ain't make a difference yeah. to me. I, I know my I know my skills, like and I and you I didn't knew that way too, like then that's wrong. So it was, that was just kind of like maybe the street in me and the in the act me then right? just let's fight. But trust me, hey dog, if the fight wasn't easy, the motherfucker hit. Hey dog, he can hit. Y'all got it. Listen, he can hit. It could have to this day, man. <clears throat> no disrespect to him or anything like that. Because he was a hell of a fight, but you know, the joke could have went either. Yeah, sure. it was a, that's why I said it was one of the greatest amateur fights I've ever seen in my life. Absolutely. It was one of the greatest um, boxing matches I've ever seen in my life. So let's talk about a little bit about um, going up before we get to the whole professional career thing. Going up in Watts and DC. <laughs> talk about it's, where you're from and how you come up and all that. Stuff. Well, um, me, I was born in Providence Hospital. Right, no fear. My son actually just left it. My son was born probably. Yeah, it's not even there anymore. No, it's still here, but it's not. It's still there, it's not a hospital. Anymore. Okay, so yeah, I grew up in Providence Hospital. I mean, I, I was born in Providence Hospital and um, was shipped over to uptown, to Tacoma Park. So Tacoma Park is based on three different locations, man. And I just was so for, uh, fortunate to have a uh, family that lived in 13th for Rittenhouse in of uh, town and then i had my my mother's mother live in the Tacoma park part of the prince Joseph county side so it was able me to go to brown school and I, my mom wanted me to go to brown school because dc was one of the best back you kind of had the best of both worlds yeah i had the best <laughs> of both worlds because i could do whatever i wanted go around and be in the streets then I had all the pictures from the, the junkies, you know, telling me what not to do, what to do. You listen to them, but you don't listen to them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. we were just hard-headed yeah. as a kid, and some things we did. But it's not like now. Like, we had the OGs. Right. We had the OGs that tell us, hey, man, y'all fight, man. Keep on doing your thing and stuff like that. It kept us out of real stuff. Like, kept us out of real stuff. Yeah. Like, real yeah. stuff. Yeah. 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 You know what I'm saying? So. It wasn't like we was get locked up all the time and stuff like that, man. We was staying into the sports. So sports was really big back then. Right. You know, um, I was just fortunate enough to be on, like, to go play French Oaks County football, where we had three different different kind of teams in French Oaks County. We had an A team, B team, and a C team. Right. That's how many kids came out for sports back then. They don't have that anymore. And it's kind of sad, you know, what's going on. But, um, and, well, I could tell you, man, we we had tournaments. Listen, we used to all group up. Snip, listen, from round one boxing club, we had probably 20, 25 people go up to Ohio State City. Wow. From Ham, yeah. you know, you got 10, 20 <laughs> going up there. Listen, we all going up there. Heard, but guess what? Play. The two best people in the world always won. And we won it probably the most. Yep. Mark's yeah. brother, James. James. Because yeah. Mark's brother. James is the record. Yeah, James won about 13 years. He, he runs straight. But I mean, he won, I think he won, it, won, he won it seven times in a row, right? No, I heard 13 times in a row. 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15. Nine. Nine. Uh, okay. okay. So, okay. and I won it. And I wanted uh, six in a row. Yeah. I wanted six in a row. So he and I, I was like, he and I. Twice in a row. Yeah, he and I was the, the winner the most out of anybody in history. I think I had four outstanding fighters out of out of the six. Out yeah, six. Out of the six. Out and my last time that I fought there, I fought um um thing. What do you think? The the tally. The tally. Um Don? Yeah, God, God, I fought God. 
I fought Gotti the last time they and I dropped him in the first round. So y'all know the four that. Yeah. Arterial Gotti. Arterial Gotti. Yep. I fought Arterial Gotti. I dropped him in the first round and he gave he got back up, man, and fourth <laughs> for three rounds, and I beat him in the championship. That's what's that. So you think you think the work ethic that we had coming up as as amateurs, that, that that that's why we became world champions because the work ethic we had as amateurs made us become world champions. Oh, and also, and also one other thing, what do you think about boxing now that a uh, 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 guy said he only put spa three times a week? <laughs> we didn't have that option. <laughs> Listen, back, back then, it's just it's crazy because um, I I trained a couple of kids, and I'm like, yeah, you tired. You're like, you don't want to spar today. You don't want to spar. Like, we didn't have that option. We didn't have the option of sparring people that was our same weight. We, did, we didn't yeah. have that option, though. I, Listen, I, 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 was the, I was the smallest one in the gym. Guess what? I boxed with kids home. I boxed with Job, I, man, I boxed with middleweights and and junior welterweights. I, I I boxed with all of them. See, if they was a light heavyweight, I probably spar with them, and we had to fight them. So we didn't have that option of picking and choosing and stuff like that. The people round one boxing gym and marketing round one boxing gym at a certain time of the day. If you went in there at that time, you knew that himself, Jack, um, Keith, uh, Vaughn, Victor. Vaughn, Victor. Um, it was going to be, uh, room full Darryl, of it was going to be freaking, uh, uh, even like them, Mickey, Mickey, uh, um, Mickey Sands. Mickey Sands, yes, Mickey Sands. And you, like, listen, I just was so full of beating butt, but, um, some, some hitters, man. Listen, you came in there, you knew you had to get the work in. If you ain't get the work in, you better get out of here. I hear you, but I'm I'm shocked about Yeah, that absolutely. Simon Browns. Listen, I had to spot with Simon Brown, Maurice Blocker. Oh, no, that Listen, good. No, you gotta remember, I'm I'm still short now. So it's just a <laughs> big issue back here. Them jokes is nice, tall, big, strong joke. But I, that's why I learned. I learned. I learned so much from them, those type of dudes, and that's why we were able to pull the pits that we was able to throw up, go fight anybody and, and go win world titles. And, and that and that and that, that led 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 to my next thing of a break up. Um, I don't know your back record. I know you had said there at over hundred fifty people and people. You had over sixty yeah, over two hundred seventy people. You had over sixty you had over sixty professionals. Yeah. You fought some of the biggest names out there. A deaf enough. I mean, with the war with the team. Mm -hmm. Here's the thing. Do uh, you think part of the um, way y'all came up, because y'all was the best, you know what I mean? Like you said, but when you walked in that gym, everybody in here bad. Yeah. So you give me that paper, sign it here, and we're going to fight Floyd Mayweather. Fuck Floyd Mayweather, let's go. I, I think it's just because. How we grew up in when you in DC, you just got that mentality. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but it's just that mentality. So also it's a mentality, but also as a boxer, you always feel like if you got that one next shot, it's always, you know, I know like I said people on time. A boxer not skinny. He gonna fight anybody, but the only way he gonna get out of the fight if he overprice yourself. Yep. But nowadays exactly. you know, nowadays it's starting to look like a lot of these people. They don't. They ain't built like that. But it, it, because they pick it and choose. They pick and choose, right? I, they I, not built like. I don't. Guys. I don't like the. I don't like the picking and choosing men. Dude. Right. Like, you know, when they came to me about count that, like, let's go. It, what kind of money we get? What we fight that? What we don't? The love we need to Because champions wasn't ducking other champions. And that's the, what the problem. Is. So, one fight that you wish you could have made. Or one fight that you wish you could have that you did make. We made the Zab Judah fight. It just did okay. It pulled out right at the last minute and it didn't happen. That's what that that was the fight. I ended up fighting um Floyd. I I was in training camp to, to fight Zab. 
we signed the contract and all, and he pulled out. Um, I wish that fight would have went on. It it wasn't a thing. We, it was a. I think it maybe was just a New York and DC type of style who they were in, and and it was us as two southpaws. He was young, and I was the open one, but it was a thing like I'm beat his little ass. Right? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and, and I wanted it to happen. I really got up for that. After he pulled out, it was like, come on. You know, you and you know how it is. Yeah, like yeah. the excitement is yeah. not there. That's like the like, bigger oh, way. Like, this ain't the one I don't even want to go. Your way is now back right. like this. So so that that was that. But um yeah, that that part right there. I, that was the one. If I, you have a fight that you can make right now for no, one of the no, other would it be? If you was all black, if Sean Bay Fifty was twenty-five years old, Johnny Welterweight Champ, who would you pick right now? Just, I would, uh, I would probably go. Hmm, it's a good one, man. Because I could go either one or one forty-seven. I can go one forty-seven. One forty. Um. I like Haney. Haney Haney is a is a is a crafty he, I, I think he's more like the old throwback. Yeah. Um and he fights like how we used to play, he got that nice little boss style and stuff like that. I, I think that would be a, a heck of a fight, a really good fight. Um Yeah, forty seven. Um one that got all the belts. Just be uh, uh, yeah. Turn. No. I, Crawford. Oh, I will fight him. I will, I will fight Terrence Crawford uh, because I think he's the more skilled, yeah. crack, crackier fighter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I want. I need that challenge. The biggest challenge. He would be that that's the challenge that I, I would like to that's to it. to get over and and break him down. And see if I can break him down. So you still involved? Are you still involved with boxing? You still training anybody? Or like, you know, well, yeah, I, I, I do train. I, I always do my personal training and stuff like that. I got a couple of kids that I, I train right now. Um, I had a guy um, that MMA, he, he won the um, um, MMA title. Uh, Jerome, he's actually going to fight again. He's defending his title um, next week, I think it is. Next week, he's defending his title. I'm not going to be in his corner because um, when he got hurt in, in one of his last fights on TV, I, I just I just don't think that he should be doing MMA okay. anymore. I think he's just straight, straight boxing. But um, I wish him the, the best of luck in defending um, his title uh, coming up. Yeah. All right, so um, you have other business ventures before. I know you've had in DC and before, you have before. Yeah, they probably left it I'm always in town. I, I don't always think you got in town, in. and I know you got that business. So, <laughs> yeah. about, so about your business. my wife, got my, my, my wife, um, is Mark J. My wife is. If it wasn't my wife, it would be no me right now. What's <laughs> that? Right. Listen, my wife is probably the, the best thing that probably could have happened to me. Shout Definitely. Shout out so, to Mrs. Mitchell. Uh, Shout out to me out. Kelly Mitchell. Kelly Mitchell. Mitchell. I give all the thanks to her and then her partner, um, Kazim. Uh, they call him Purple, but they Kazim, man. They they got the Purple Flip. Um, they developed this in um, in COVID. Right. You know, he had the sea moss. He had the sea moss. He was trying to figure out how we can make this sea moss taste way better because it's so healthy. And um, we started. We started being able to learn how to blend it, gel it, um, put fruit to it, um, see the healthy benefits that we can put to it. Some of the vitamins, the turmeric, the bladder rack, the sour socks, and things of that nice. We we put to them, and we started making juices, gels. Um, we started making um, sauces with the the uh, um, with sea moss and things like that. So. The place that we have uh, in on Rice's Town Road up in, in Baltimore, um, if you go to purpleflip.com, um, you'll you can get everything. Um, I meet my myself. I actually do deliveries down here. Maybe every other week I come down to DC in the Maryland um, and do deliveries. But um, we vegan base. 
vegan burgers. So we have the vegan on Saturdays. We do vegan burgers, man. Like the vegan burgers, like I didn't know vegan burgers were so good. <laughs> I'm about to come tell you. The vegan burgers good. Um, I need a little calorie. We have we have, <laughs> we have we have we have vegan turkey wraps. Okay. With the vegan sauce, we have vegan sauce. We have salads with the, the vegan dressing. So we we make all these things right there in house, and it's it's all out. So yeah, the purple flip is is what's going on. Um, my wife and I, her mom, we always had um a lounge, uh, yeah. for twenty. You ready to be twenty five years now, twenty four years now that we've had uh buckets lounge. Buckets lounge. Uh, yeah, exactly. and we. It's a, it's a lounge right on um, Chester and Oliver up in up in Baltimore. That's on the east side of Baltimore. Okay. They call it the east side. So um, and we've had that several times. Me and Mom came there one time. We and Mom came over. We were in Baltimore one time. And Mom said, man, let's call Sean, baby. We'll go back. Look. And Sean, baby, didn't have the phone. We ain't know where we were going. We, just, we came back home. <laughs> but yeah, Mark been up there, yeah. man. Like, and we had some fun there, man. Old school vibe. And um, we, we just try to keep it. While we talking, I got to give a shout out to the to the, to the, uh, to the to the people who made us. I got to definitely give a shout out to DBA because that's where we came from. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah, no. if, if it wasn't for people, we all came from we, so, we, yeah. I definitely want to give them a shout out. champions at all. Yeah. So I definitely want to always make sure I give them a shout out. You know what I mean? Those are the people that made a lot of us. Potomac Valley Association, that's the PPA. Absolutely. I was the president for about three years. I was secretary of the field. I was the junior leader chairman for about four years. And yeah, what PPA people got? What for Mark and Ham people got? So I got, we always got a shout out to the Absolutely. Oh. And, and, and Ham is that, listen, one of the best trainers, man. This very versatile, you know what I'm saying? And, and can do his thing he, he, with, with the boxing and he gonna brawl you all. So. Oh, yeah. And I, and I always take my hat off to, to Adrian Davis and uh, Marvin Sims. Listen, mm -hmm. for my whole entire career, I had the same people, just like Mark, the same person. I wasn't that dibble dabble kind of person, man. Um, if I lost a fight, it was because of me. I, it was me in that man. You know what I'm saying, but no more. But yeah, I I can't believe them. Soon as somebody lose, I'm flying my train. Y'all really doing that? Yeah, we're live on that day. Sticking with Adrian Davis and all. They 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 mad. Every time every time they lose, they get a new train. Yeah, man. So what what year you won your first world title, Charlie? I won my first world title actually in 1998. Okay. Um, in Paris, France, man. Um, Khalid Rilu, I, I fought him. It beat, um, it beat, um, Frankie Randall. Okay. And Frankie Randall had beat, um, Chavez. Chavez. He beat Chavez. He beat Chavez. Yeah, he fought yeah. Frankie Randall. Frankie Randall fought, um, Khalid Rilu. And Khalid Rilu beat him. I instantly picked up the phone, called Don, and was like, I want that fight. And he said, okay. And it's, it's, not, it's kind of funny because, like you said, you had to go over with her. Yeah. I had to go over with LA when the first time. <laughs> but the second world side out for, I won it on your show. When you fought Ray Yeah, he sure did. Yeah. 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 He yeah. won it. So, so, so it, was, it's funny. It's, it's crazy thing. Like, this is the crazy thing. He holds one thing for in that show. Yeah. So, for people. Yeah. Man, that is what you yeah. yeah. so, so, man. That, you gotta understand. Was that the we, Jones show? No. I understand. Like, I was the first main event. Listen. Yeah. I was the I was the first person to open up the Capital One Arena, which was the MCI Center. Then me, yeah. I was the first one to bring boxing to that arena. Yeah. Just like Sugar Ray Leonard was the first to bring it to yeah. the Capital Center, yeah. he was the first to bring it there. Yeah. Right, bring it here. And I had that, but my, my boys on the on the call. There's no way I could have done it by myself. Yeah. We almost sold out the joint. Exactly. Well, I went, we almost sold out the joke. Listen, I almost sold out. And then I came back to DC again to defend my title three more times after that. To DC <laughs> to defend my title. Keep it in the whole Listen, I, 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 I had my first pro fight in Atlantic City and I won my last world title in Atlantic City. 
when you yeah. when, when you first came out the Amazon, you got signed. You signed directly with Don. Yeah. No, I signed with um, Frank Gill. Okay. Frank Gill and that crew was up in uh, Atlantic City. Okay. Atlantic City, they was um, tied to um, Bob Arum and, and all of them at the time. So that's why I was fighting on um, USA. Right. And I had the contract with USA and ESPN. Okay. So that's why that's what we had to fight on those shows. But I fought in the Atlantic City eighteen times. Wow, man. eighteen times. But that was your man. That was just like yeah, like, 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 yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was in Atlantic City all the time, all the time, man. And I'm gonna give a shout out to Atlantic City, man. Listen, I had two places um, give me is a for for. Um, being in the Hall of Fame, Maryland. I was even born in Maryland. Soon as Maryland changed the the, the right. thing of the criteria of you, you had to be born in Maryland to be able to be into their PTO. to their no to their to their Hall of Fame to Maryland Sports Hall of Fame. Right. Maryland Sports Hall of Fame. You. Right. So as soon as they changed, as soon as they changed the rule of the criteria of having to be born in Maryland. Soon as they changed that rule, they got me in the first year. Me and and, and Johnny Unitas got in together. So Johnny yeah. Unitas played his whole career in Brown. Well, he for but the, he for the, he for was the, born, the, you gotta remember, he was born in Pittsburgh, I think he was, or something like that. He was born, he wasn't born in Maryland. So they put us in at the same time in Atlantic City. I'm giving a shout out to Atlantic City because I'm born. I'm getting inducted this summer. Oh yeah, we can uh, get to that. This summer, in September, um, they inducted me into the Boxing Hall of Fame in Atlantic City. And listen, it, it's Impressive. a great honor. It's a great honor Impressive. to do that. Listen, I, I'm I'm sitting here with the International Boxing Hall of Fame right here, and uh, uh, East Central. Sports Hall of Fame Hold also. About listen, I'm a whole shot, bro. I'll touch on it. First time me and you. You're sitting here with two Hall of Famers, man. Stop playing. Hall of Famers. Stop playing. The first time I went, no, I, I, I got a picture. Matter of fact, I'm going to find a picture to show you. The first time I really got a chance to like really meet you, meet you, and have conversations with you was when they inducted Mark in the Hall of Fame. And you came up to you came up to Catastolic. Yeah. I got a picture with me. Yeah, it was no way in three thousand worlds I would have missed him. And man, soon as it, soon as I heard that he was in the Hall of Fame, guess what? Sean Bates was flying out. And guess yeah. you did. And, and, and I told him, I said, "Dope." I guess what? Yeah. And guess what? You the only nigga from DC. Watch it. Watch it. Listen. 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 Man, I had a bunch of good plans. I had all this. I understand something. Nobody. Me and Mark Mark came up in this thing together. It's no way. Man, that's My father had known this boy since he was a kid. Guess what? Guess what? And that's why you is the first guest on the Shout Out Box podcast. <laughs> we had to call you, first of all, like you said, you thought you going to Hall of Fame. And when I met you, I got a picture of me, you, Mark, and Marvin Hattie. Well, I'll tell you one thing, I'll be there. We, and we gonna be there. We already talked about that. We already yeah. talked about it, yeah. We already talked about it. I'm gonna have, I'm gonna have some hey, hey, hold on, let's go back though, let's go back. Well, we were just there that weekend with Mark and I That might have been one of the most funnest times. Oh, dog, we had a ball. I had a ball. We had a ball. Man, I'm gonna tell y'all something. If you ever get around a bunch of Hall of Fame or or, or world champion boxers and let them just start doing them, we be we be talking, they be jumping, we be talking for each shit. other. Oh my and god! If you was in our decade and, <laughs> and Ray Lennon Tumbo, I I said Ray, I'll beat you like <laughs> and you Ray, Miles, you shine on you like you be, that's how you be talking, man. That's how they talk. It's Ray Lennon come to the party. Somebody say hold up. Right down on the clock. Yeah, it was so <laughs> But down the head with his little chain on. Like, right down. I mean, I saw what they did. Ray Burst that jumping in a pool with a float. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, it, it was just so <laughs> much fun, man. I can I can believe. So I, I, I can't wait to you go in, man. I'm, I'm a that we Oh, man, we're going to have a ball. Hey, look, Atlantic City Boys and Hall of Fame beyond the Wet. I had, we had some fun up here, man. Great guys up here, man. 
you got like some of the big people who want some of the biggest fighters that's gonna be up there, man. It is absolutely great. Roberto Durant, I'll be in town again. Oh, damn! Roberto Durant, all the whole of the same day. Larry Holmes, man, listen. Yeah. I'll never forget, like I said, when Mark went in, I'm sitting in the lobby. Me and Tommy yeah. Hearns just chopping it up for an hour. Yeah, man, yeah. Man, buddy McGurk come get me and take me upstairs. Listen, man, yeah, Bob and Hagler, my whole, my, yeah, oh, like, he, sat me, he sat me next to, they sat me that's next to him at the, at the, at the, at the, at the, at the, at the banquet, yeah, at the banquet, at the banquet, and he talked my ear off for the hours, yeah, for the hours, you know, that cool guy, man, I hear about that, I'm going in the Atlanta City Hall of Fame, make sure y'all come out and support him for Davis and Henry, I don't know the date, September the 26th, September the 27th is actually one month after my birthday. My birthday, August 27th. So it's September the 27th through the 29th that weekend. That Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Trust me, I'm going to have parties. I'm going to put the bus thing together, man. We're going to bless I'm going to have something on my, on my um, IG page. So check out my okay. IG page. Sure John Ray Mitchell at um, John Ray Mitchell, two-time champ, I think it is. That, that's my IG page and my Facebook page is always Sean Bay Mitchell. I'm gonna make sure you send it to me. I'm gonna make sure you send it to me and I'm gonna I'm post it. You know, I, I'm gonna push it. I'm gonna push it, Sean Bay. Absolutely. Whenever I push okay. it, you get pushed. But we gonna push it, man. You gotta go get some travel plans together. Make sure you make sure we go to uh, Atlantic City and support this travel, man. Because the one thing I'm gonna do it like old, man. The one don't thing I would say, like I said, is so many people that said they love the box. You know what I mean? So many people that we, we go play for dead things. But when Mark went in the Hall of Fame, only one nigga from D.C. showed up. Hey, look. Everybody uh, else talking yeah, about they was, we ain't, we ain't cutting nothing. I'm telling the truth. Listen, so listen, everybody else talking about they was coming. When that man do oh, something, or well, if I do something, guess what happened? He pop up, he show up. Yeah. Listen, I, I done had my father 24 years, 24 years, seven. listen. I can lay on my hand, I can read you that it's being healthy and he's healthy about me going to pump. Or, you know, that's what we do. We support. <laughs> Once again, it's the Sugar Box of Podcasts. Make sure y'all tune in. Absolutely. Thank you, man. Thank you for letting oh, me yes, come sir. on, man. Yes, sir. And be the first guest. Oh, man. I'm, I'm the first guest, man. So make sure you, make sure you uh, two tune in for the Shopping Box of Podcasts. On the Champions here TV, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, man. Y'all come on, come on forward, man. We just just the beginning of a whole lot of things and love you. Thank you so much, Sean. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Y'all support them young amateur boxers too. Oh yeah, I'll put the ball on next week. Uh, uh, the Dr. Uh, Reading Texas. Thumbs up, people. Yes. Okay, go and grab the next week and run and roll strong. Maybe by the time this um comes out, it'll be that week. So. Thank y'all so much, man. We appreciate y'all, man. Very much. I'm saving y'all. I tell everybody. I love everybody watching. Right. Thank you.